Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're diving into the Hessian matrix, a powerful mathematical concept that captures second-order derivatives of scalar-valued functions. The Hessian is crucial in optimization and machine learning, especially for understanding curvature and refining model performance. Let's break it down step by step. First, what is the Hessian matrix? Imagine you have a scalar-valued function, which we will call f, that depends on multiple inputs. The Hessian matrix organizes all the second-order partial derivatives of this function. Simply put, it tells us how the rate of change of the function itself changes with respect to the inputs. This is particularly useful in optimization because it helps us determine whether a point is a minimum, maximum, or saddle point. The Hessian matrix is a square matrix where each entry represents a second-order partial derivative. For a function f of multiple variables, labeled as x1, x2, and so on up to xn, the Hessian matrix is defined as follows. The Hessian matrix consists of rows and columns. The first entry, located in the first row and first column, is the second derivative of the function with respect to x1 squared. The next entry in the same row is the second derivative of the function with respect to x1 and x2. This pattern continues, including all possible mixed second-order derivatives between variables. The first row contains the second-order derivatives of the function with respect to x1, x2, and so on. Each subsequent row contains the second-order derivatives with respect to the other variables. Now, let's move on to a concrete example. Consider a simple scalar-valued function, f of x equals x1 cubed plus 3 times x1 times x2 squared. The Hessian matrix for this function is calculated by taking all possible second-order derivatives. We will compute it step by step in this example. First, we compute the first-order derivatives of the function. The function is f of x equals x1 cubed plus 3 times x1 times x2 squared. To find the first derivative with respect to x1, we take the derivative of the entire function while treating x2 as a constant. This gives us 3 times x1 squared plus 3 times x2 squared. Next, we compute the first derivative with respect to x2. This time, we treat x1 as a constant. The derivative is 6 times x1 times x2. Now, we move on to the second-order derivatives, which form the entries of the Hessian matrix. Let's calculate these step by step. The first entry of the Hessian matrix is the second derivative of the function with respect to x1 twice. Taking the derivative of 3 times x1 squared plus 3 times x2 squared with respect to x1 gives 6 times x1. The second entry in the first row is the mixed partial derivative with respect to x1 and x2. Taking the derivative of 3 times x1 squared plus 3 times x2 squared with respect to x2 gives 6 times x2. Moving to the second row, the first entry is the mixed partial derivative with respect to x2 and x1. Since the mixed partial derivatives are the same, this is also 6 times x2. Finally, the last entry in the Hessian matrix is the second derivative of the function with respect to x2 twice. Taking the derivative of 6 times x1 times x2 with respect to x2 gives 6 times x1. Now, let's organize these into the Hessian matrix. The Hessian is a 2 by 2 square matrix. The first row contains 6 times x1 and 6 times x2. The second row contains 6 times x2 and 6 times x1. This matrix provides second order derivative information for the function. It helps us analyze the curvature of the function and determine the nature of critical points, such as minima, maxima, or saddle points. Next, we'll look at how this concept is implemented using TensorFlow in the context of neural networks. Specifically, we will compute the Hessian matrix for a loss function in a simple neural network to understand how second-order derivatives can provide insights into the curvature of the loss landscape. Let's dive into the code and see it in action. In this TensorFlow implementation, we define a simple neural network with one hidden layer and one output neuron. The goal is to compute the Hessian matrix of the loss function with respect to the input features. First, we define the model and the input data. The input consists of two samples, each with two features. We also define the target outputs and a mean squared error loss function. Next, we use TensorFlow's gradient tape functionality to compute the second-order derivatives. The inner gradient tape calculates the first-order derivatives of the loss with respect to the inputs. The outer gradient tape computes the second-order derivatives, which form the entries of the Hessian matrix. Finally, we assemble the Hessian matrix by iterating over all pairs of input features. Each element of the matrix is calculated as the second derivative of the loss with respect to a pair of input features. The resulting matrix provides valuable insights into the curvature of the loss function with respect to the input. 
This example demonstrates how TensorFlow can be used to compute the Hessian matrix for a neural network, allowing us to analyze second-order derivatives and understand the behavior of the model's loss landscape. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel and stay updated with more informative and engaging content. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.